Tooling is expensive, and sometimes it makes more sense to make your own than to buy it. Today, I'm gonna to be machining a two inch dimple in a piece of steel, and I'm limited on tooling. Normally, I would use a ball nose end mill, and I would just plunge in, and that would make my dimple. But the largest ball nose end mill I have is this half inch. So my, my next option would be to uh, profile a drill bit. And that works great, especially if you pilot drill. Uh, and here's an example that I've done. This is a one inch drill bit. Um, it, it works beautifully, but the problem there is, is I don't really have an extra two inch drill bit that I'm willing to destroy. Uh, two inch drill bits are very expensive. So I, I'm not willing to take that approach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine my own tooling out of A bearing roller. I've done this quite a few times. It almost always works great. Uh, if you're not familiar with roller bearings, uh, you, you for sure you've seen ball bearings in a, in a ball bearing. You may not have seen um, a spherical roller. It works essentially the same way. The spherical roller takes the place of the ball in the bearing. And um, the advantage on a, to a spherical bearing, spherical roller bearing, is that it takes more thrust. You see these in heavy duty applications usually. So the first thing I'm gonna do today is anneal this roller so that I can put it in the lathe and machine it. So if you're wondering, I was running out of acetylene. That's why the rosebud started popping and flaming out on me. And that's also why it didn't get quite hot enough. It got hot enough to anneal. It didn't get as hot as I wanted it to, but it definitely will be annealed. Uh, that's also why I put this coffee can over it was to insulate it, to hold the temperature a little longer, to let it cool off slowly. So my first few cuts, I took really light passes because it's not really held very secure in the jaw. Um, you can maybe see in the camera, the only contact point on the jaw is this outer tooth. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now that I've got it about 20 thousandths oversized, I'm going to flip it around and grab it on this truer surface. And then I can take bigger cuts. Now I'm just going to freehand this. I'm not going to be extremely accurate. I'm going to freehand most of it and then I'm going to use this radius gauge to check it and I'll probably use some abrasives to fine tune it.
The next operation will be machining the flutes on this cutter. I have the z-axis adjusted so that uh, center line will be correct but just like on the lathe I'll be doing the rest by eyeball. Um, you might notice that I've machined a flat for the set screw uh, and then what I'm going to be using is this fixture. It's an indexing fixture I made for some other job but it'll work great for this. Some of you may have noticed that I cut these flutes so that they will be left hand cutting. Well, uh, you know, that's for a reason. That's so um, that the back side of the gears get wear whenever I'm using the tool. I did that to cancel out chatter from the right hand turning drill bit because I thought it would look cool. Because that was my son's idea. Because today is backwards day. Because I'm still. I did that because sometimes I just don't think. I was in a hurry, wasn't thinking about what I was doing. The vice was already on that side of the cutter when I walked up to the mill and you know this led to that and here we are. So this will all look different after I get through cleaning it up. But there we are so far.
Uh, next up is going to be heat treat and after I'm through heat treating I'll put my relief on the cutting edge. And I'm trying to heat up the base and the sides and let that heat migrate to the cutting edge. I don't want to heat up the cutting edge first. Okay, first test, I'm going to try to plunge straight into a half inch piece of aluminum. Let's see what happens. Take a look at that. Okay, that's pretty nice. I guess I could have got it in the center a little better. Okay, it plunges. No pilot necessary for aluminum. I like that, it looks good. All right, test two. I'm gonna plunge straight into steel. This is mild steel, nothing special. Let's see if it'll do it without a pilot. Um, the table in the mill was moving around. I'm going to have to work on my table lock. Okay, that worked pretty good. No pilot. So if you'd like to see this tool in action and you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you'll get a chance to see it in one of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.